यो विश्वम विदधाति पाति सततम संहार यत्यंजसा सृष्ट्वा दिव्य महाश्च दीश्च विविधान दूरी करो त्यामयान विभ्रानो जलना चकास्ति भुवने पीयूश पूर्णम घटम तम धन्वंतरी रूपमीश ममलम वंदा महे श्रेयसे वंदा महे श्रेयसे वंदा महे श्रेयसे ओम शांति 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 Hello, welcome back everyone. Today we will be talking about different aspects of examination. So previously you may have gone through these uh, aspects where we look at Dashavida Pariksha, which are the 10 aspects of, of examination, as well as Ashtavida Pariksha, or 8 aspects of examination. So in that, what we're looking at is we're, we're trying to figure out the exact state of health and all of the different factors that play into a person's health or it play into the development of a disease. So it gives us a clear idea as to what is the situation of that person at this particular time and how we can address whatever issues may be confront they're confronted with. So in the 10 aspects of examination or the Dasha Vida Pariksha, we're actually looking at the state of health from the person, all aspects such as their constitution or their prakriti, their state of agni, the state of doshas and tattus, and so on and so forth. We'll talk about it in a minute. And in the other aspect of examination, the ashtavida pariksha, we're actually going to be examining biological uh, parameters. So for instance, the state of nadi or their pulse, so we're going to be looking at the different changes in their stool or their um, defecation health. Also in urinary health, we're going to be looking at all of those factors. So those are the biological factors in their body and this is how we examine them as per Ayurveda. In the ancient days, we didn't have imaging instruments and we didn't have other forms of um, or tools for examination. So this is what we used, or this is what our acharyas used in order to understand exactly what is happening in a person's body and how, what is the best way for us to approach for treatment. Okay, so in Dashavida Pariksha, there are 10, it's sort of the 10 fold um, aspects of examination. So in that we're looking at the individual and we're looking at not just internal health, but we're also looking at their environment as a whole and how that plays into their particular state of health at that particular time. So the 10 factors are dushya, desha, bala, kala, agni or anala, prakriti, vaya, sattva, satmya, and ahara. And this, this reference is from Ashtanga Hridaya uh, by Bhagbata, and he explains these 10 aspects for examination. The last part of that uh, verse is avasta. Avasta means the state. So we're going to be looking at the state of each and every one of these factors. So the first factor is dushya, which means that which is corrupted or that which is aggravated. So remember when we talked about doshas and we talked about doshas has the ability to corrupt it also has the ability to sustain. So when doshas are in its normal, healthy, balanced state, it is termed as dosha. When it has the ability, it varies from its normal state, then it also has the ability to corrupt or to infect or to pollute or to change the normal functioning of its surroundings. So in that, it is, it is then termed as dushya. So in here, in this state, where we talk about dushya, we're actually going to be examining or figuring out the state of the doshas that are involved, 
as well as the dhatus that are affected. So here we, for instance, if a person comes to you and they have a particular pathology or disease condition, we need to figure out which are all the doshas that are involved in that pathology, as well as which are all the dhatus that are affected in that pathology. So in that, this is what we would, we would note down or we would um, observe in this particular type of examination. The next is the desha. Desha literally means a place. Uh, so here we're looking at the place as the geographical region where the person lives in, as well as the site or the place in the body that is affected in that particular condition. The reason why the geographical location is very important is because, again, the body responds to its environment in different ways, which we know as the different changes in the doshas according to seasons, which we've already gone through, as well as we look at the different climates that the person is exposed to. So for instance, if a person is living in a desert region, it, tends, it means that they are more exposed to very dry, hot climate. Whereas opposed to if they were living in a mountainous region or somewhere where it's very cold, it tends to be, again, more cold, more moist, more damp. So that is a part of their environment and that may also have a factor to play in either the production of the disease or helps in maintaining or balancing or taking away from the strength of the disease. So this is very important for us to understand. Not just the geographical region that they're in right now, but also we may need to find out where they lived previously. Not everyone lives in the place where they were born. So if they have moved recently or if they were habitual to a different climate and they have now recently changed that geographical region that they're living in, that may have had some part to play in the particular pathology that they're coming to you for. So in that, we need to again see that change in the geographical region and how that may have a factor to play into the disease. As well as the site in the body. So here, desha, deha desha, which means the site in the body. Deha means body. So, for instance, if the disease is affected in the skin, if the pathology is presenting in the skin, so that's, that's the part of the body that is affected, um, so we need to look at that. Or, for instance, if the condition is located in the, the abdomen or in the stomach or in the legs, that is the part of the body that is most affected. So we need to, we need to keep that in mind when we're looking at treatment aspects. Um, so for instance, if the condition is in the thighs, the thighs is a little bit difficult to treat because of the fact that it is in the vata condition, it's in the, in the vata area, the vata domain, but it also has a, a huge amount of kapha and a huge amount of fat in that location, in the thighs. That's just naturally how it is. So it, sometimes it becomes a little bit difficult to treat conditions which are in the thighs because you have to give sufficient amount of nourishment for vata to control vata, but you also have to not increase the condition from the natural disposition that it has being predominantly kapha or predominantly uh, area where fat is located. Okay, so that's the examination of the desha or the region, geographical region as well as the region in the or the site in the body that is affected. The next is the bala. Bala means strength. So remember in one of the earlier videos where we were talking about the strength of the disease as opposed to the strength of the person, the roga bala, which is the disease, as well as the rogi bala, or the, the patient, the strength of the patient. So this is really important for us to understand um, because it also determines the intensity or the amount of measures that we need in order to correct and bring back the person to a state of balance or to a state of health. So the next factor is the bala or the strength. And one of the earlier videos we talked about the strength of the disease as opposed to the strength of the patient or the person. So in that we look at factors that either feed into increasing the strength of the disease and how chronic it is, um, how much it has started to affect different areas in the body or different doshas 
also depending on the chronicity it starts to affect the dhatus so depending on which state or which dhatu it has started to affect we know how difficult or how easy it is going to be for us to treat that the second part of it is we're looking at the strength of the patient and not just looking at the strength of the patient or the rogi not their physic not just their physical strength but we're also going to be looking at their ability to withstand different conditions from the from the disease or their threshold for pain or their threshold for withstanding disease. So for instance, there is a description of a laghu rogi or a guru rogi. A laghu rogi is a person who may have a very severe condition, may be in a lot of pain, but they don't express that pain. They don't express that, oh, well, it's really not that bad, or I can deal with it, I can handle it. Whereas opposed to a guru rogi is a person who has a very mild condition but expresses it to be much more severe than it actually is. Or they have you know, a mild amount of pain, a mild amount of discomfort, but they are expressing it, oh, this is really bad, I can't handle this, this is too unbearable. So for that, it's really important for us to be able to pick up on that and figure out where exactly that strength or that bala lies in that patient. Because if they are expressing their symptoms much more than it actually is, we need to pick up on the other factors that their body is going to be telling us. Their body is going to be giving off these certain signs and symptoms. The roga is going to be giving off certain signs and symptoms. And we need, we need to be able to pick up on that and figure out exactly where it's at, how severe is, are these symptoms really, so that we would know what is the appropriate treatment. We don't give an excessive, very strong treatment for something that's really very mild, or give a mild treatment for something that is really very strong or very chronic. So this rogi bala and roga bala is really important for us to understand. That is the... The, the type of examination of bala. The next is the examination of kala or time. Here we need to look at the season. We also need to look at the chronicity of the disease. So for instance, if um, we know that the different changes in doshas according to seasons where it's more predominant. So for instance, if you are getting a vata condition in the winter time, you know that it naturally tends to happen because of the climatic change that has some of the similar qualities and gunas that would feed into the disease condition. It contributes to the strength of the disease. So in that case, even if we were to progress and to prolong the treatment, we know that once that season changes and there's a change in the climate, naturally the strength of the disease is going to reduce because it no longer has that factor that's feeding into it. So once the season changes, the severity or the symptoms, the severity of symptoms will naturally decline as the season changes. So we need to also understand the chronicity of the disease or the progression of the disease. So for instance, in classical texts, we know that there are two descriptions of disease, either nava or jirna. Nava means new. So if the disease is of a recent onset, it is it doesn't have as much strength, it's just recently gained strength, it's recently been able to produce these signs and symptoms, and it, doesn't ha it didn't have enough time to start affecting more and more amount of doshas, more amount of dhatus, it hasn't started to deteriorate the structures. So it is known as a nava roga or a nava avastha. Whereas if it becomes jirna, jirna means it has it has grown, it has matured. So once it has matured, which means the disease has gained enough strength that it has it is able to withstand or maintain itself as a disease, as well as it gains more and more strength from factors and it different factors, different qualities, different activities, so that it can start to progress and start to build and grow into a more and more complicated disease condition. So that kala or that time that has passed from the onset of the disease is really important for us to understand how strong it is and what, again, what are the treatment measures that we need to use for that. A good example of that is also in jwara or in fevers. If it is a recent onset of a jwara, it is also known as, it is in the ama avastha or it is in the state where ama is present. Ama is contributing to the production of that jwara or that fever. Once it passes seven days, 
seven to ten days, it now enters into the Jirnavasta. So if a person has had a fever for more than seven days, it is no longer because of the ama that that fever is existing, but it has now become the chronic state of fever, and now the ama state has gone, it, again, it is more now affecting the doshas, it's affecting the tattus, and the treatment of that would be different. If you're treating something that has ama or that is in a newer state, we need to, uh, we need to first address the ama, we need to address the, the milder state of the disease. Once it becomes chronic, then again, it's more complicated, so the treatment for that would be different. Okay? So the next aspect that we examine is the Agni. And as, as we've gone through in some of the earlier videos, we've talked about the states of Agni, the different stages it will be at, the different um, pathologies and signs and symptoms that it may exhibit. So the state of Agni is really important. Uh, also, if it is aligned with the person's Prakriti or if it is different that than the person's Prakriti, what is expected for that Prakriti. Also, if the state of Agni is being changed according to the season, all of these different factors that we need to look at because, as we mentioned earlier, Charaka Samhita says that treating the Agni is half of treatment. If you're able to successfully increase a person's Agni and able to get through that one hurdle, that itself can be the major factor that determines the success of your treatment. So, determining the person's and the state of their Agni is really, really important for us to understand, again, what we're going to determine how our treatment is going to be. If we need to first increase Agni, or if we can first directly give uh, treatment measures that's going to affect the disease condition to reduce the disease condition. So the next factor is Prakriti. And as we all know, how important it is for us to understand Prakriti or the constitution of a person. Remember, the constitution of a person cannot ever really change. Even if a person is a of a vata pitta type or a pitta kapha type, sometimes the doshas may be more predominant at one point in their life as opposed to another point in their life. But even then, their prakriti, their innate constitution is always going to be the same. Sometimes determining a person's prakriti can be difficult because by the time they get to you, they are also in a vikrata state or in a state of imbalance. So we need to differentiate between what are the factors or the qualities that is speaking to you and telling you that it is actually an imbalance as opposed to a normal balance of their their body constitution. So for instance, if a person is a kapha prakriti, they naturally will tend to have more glossy, more shiny, or sort of oily skin. That's just because that's part of their prakriti. So we need to see that that's, that's their normal constitution as opposed to if it was a pitta person who has really oily skin, then it's no longer part of their constitution or their prakriti, but it is actually a vikriti. So by seeing those signs and symptoms, they're not going to be able to tell you this is my prakriti or this is my vikriti. You're going to be seeing that the person has oily skin. What we need to determine is, is that oily skin a normal oily skin or is that oily skin a part of the disease condition or part of the vikriti? Okay, so determining a person's constitution is really important for us, again, to understand what are the treatment measures we're going to be using. The next factor that we examine is the person's age or vaya. So we know that there are certain doshas that are predominant as per different stages in our life. So if a person is in adolescence from, from birth to adolescence is the kapha stage of life, if they, t they show up with a kapha vikrati or a imbalance of kapha or a kapha sort of related disease condition, that is normal and expected of that age group. So treating that again would be fairly simple because it is it is what is expected at that particular time. Whereas opposed to having a kapha condition or a kapha disease in the pitta stage of life means even there, there are not factors that are feeding into the kapha naturally, there are abnormal factors that are feeding into the kapha. And even though it's the pitta stage of life, you should expect pitta related conditions. Instead, the kapha conditions are so strong that it is able to, again, manifest or come up at the pitta stage in life. So that's where, again, we need to look at this, their age and also that also determines 
the appropriate treatment as well. The type of treatment or the type of measures that we would use for uh, an adolescent or for a child would be very different than of that we would use for a person in the pitta stage of their life as opposed to what we would need to use for a person in their elderly state of life or in geriatric conditions. Okay. The next factor that we examine is the sattva. Sattva is another synonym for the mind where we look at the psychological state and that's again very important because we know now in Ayurveda how important the mind has a role in playing um, for production of disease or for manifestation of disease. Um, we know that that can be a causative factor. Sometimes the disease originates with an imbalance in the mind and then can produce a, a physical derangement and physical signs and symptoms. Sometimes it's symptoms that starts physically in the physical body and then also starts to affect the, the mental status and also starts to affect mental health. So the state of mind at that particular point in time is really important for us to understand because again, that is going to affect the outcome of your treatment measures. The next is satmya or habits. So here we're looking at actually their lifestyle habits as well as other habits. So for instance, if a person tends to sleep really late at night and wake up really early in the morning or if they tend to not sleep at all or if they tend to watch TV before they go to sleep, um, these are just examples of, of certain lifestyle habits that they have that again may be playing a factor in a disease condition. Um, other things that we know, um, other habits, if they exercise or if they don't, um, if they tend to travel a lot, these are, these are habits or these are things that are satmya to them that we need to understand. Satmya means anything that is habitual, anything that the person is re doing repeatedly in their life that we need to know about those habits. Sometimes there are things that are unhealthy habits that your body becomes so used to that it's not producing unwanted effects. So those are known as unhealthy habits but also habits that your body is used to. So for instance, those are no termed as okasatmya. So for instance, if a person drinks a lot of coffee, but even after drinking a lot of coffee, they're still able to fall asleep. I know there are a lot of people who, who can drink a cup of coffee and then go directly to bed and they're fine. The caffeine doesn't affect them. And so that has become habitual to their body that it is an unhealthy habit, but it's still a habit so that they are not affected by that caffeine. So those are certain things that we need to know. Also other habits such as smoking or drinking or even habits such as untimely meals. All of these are habits, anything that is in repetition in their daily life, we need to know about. So those are things that are satmya that we need to examine. And the last is ahara, diet. We all know how important diet is in Ayurveda because we know that, you know, the term that we are what we eat. It's, it's, it's a major part of us understanding how the body responds to what we're putting in. So what, and that's why also ahara or food or diet can be such a huge factor in changing a person's state of health. So whatever type of diet, whatever type of foods that they eat, we need to know about. We need to take a full long history about what they would eat on a daily basis, what they used to eat before if their diet dietary habits have changed recently even if uh, depending on their age what were their some of their dietary habits as a child if you feel that that's a factor that may be playing into their disease condition right now um, sometimes there's accumulation that has occurred in the body from what you know unhealthy habits unhealthy dietary habits that we've had previously and there's a buildup in the body and that may be causing the pathology that you have now. So these, we need to understand a full history and a full background of the dietary habits of a person. So here in all of these 10 factors now, you can see that we're looking at the person as a whole. When we go say Ayurvedic is a holistic medicine, this is what we mean. We're looking at every single aspect of the person, including their environment, how their body is reacting to that environment, and where this imbalance may have occurred so that we can help to now fix that imbalance and so that we can bring them again back to a state of health.